one sector, Ramji, in which you've tracked very, very closely, which seems to be mired and doesn't seem like ending the litigation there is telecom. To what extent would you blame the government and its actions for creating a situation of this kind? Just to give you an example, you have policy being changed, suddenly one fine day you say prospective, retrospective, now that matters before the courts. Just when we think it's going to be over, there is a certain kind of decision making which is going on getting questioned. And then you have the entire industry too, split down the middle uh, on different categories of players. It just doesn't seem like ending. First, do you agree it's a total mess out there? And second, what is it going to take to correct and who is to blame for this according well, If you ask me in one word, I would blame the ad hocism policy of the government that has led to this mess. It is not as if that we were venturing into telecom for the first time in this country. When we opened up in the late 1997-99 with the first policy, we knew that we had examples worldwide and people had opened up, Europe had opened up, in the US they had faced some difficulties and therefore we were taking the best of those to bring about a new telecom policy for this country and then and, and it was recognized that it has a direct impact on the GDP. Every amount of teledensity that you grew had a direct positive impa impact on the GDP also. So this was clearly a very, very good measure. But you needed to have thought through all that, anticipated that there will be growth, there will be competition, there will be need. Technology is something that you can't restrain. There is no way. You can only chase technology, but technology will always be a step ahead. Therefore, you can't put artificial barriers and close your eyes. You had to therefore think ahead and use those very people, the stakeholders, to get them together to participate and say, now we will have challenges. How do we go ahead? You will have spectrum problems. You will have shortage. You had the defense holding on to spectrum. You anticipated. You should have anticipated. You did anticipate actually, but you did nothing to have those clear. You knew that there was an ailing public sector. You knew that there was need to bring in more competition. But the ad hocism in not tying up the loose threads and allowing it to be remaining open for people and vested interests to then take advantage of each of those and abuse the system, that led to more complications. As I see it, any person who had sat back then and thought through it very clearly could have anticipated. But we just didn't go ahead to resolve the problems even before they arose. And we seem and to continue to do that. And we, co and we continue to do that even now. And today I am amazed, even though the courts have pointed out that there is a flaw in one particular area of your telecom policy, you need to resolve that reasonably. You should have come forward to the court very candidly and said, yes, we realize there was a problem, but this is how we are proposing. We don't want to hurt the industry. We don't want to hurt the investors. We want to do this so that it is in public interest. There should be no disruption of services. And we want to leapfrog now into the next generation. But this is our plan. Please approve and go ahead and hold people who have done some wrong guilty. But let there be no disruption. If you had taken the court into confidence, admitted that there were some things that you didn't think through, we would have been in a far happier position. But if you think about it and you say, I'm going to slap somebody with a penalty and I'll find... This is all knee-jerk reaction. It is almost as if now the executive on the one hand says, well, I don't know, you can't wring your hands helplessly and say, well, let the courts decide it. But the courts were led into it because there was something that was being arbitrary and that has been found. So why can't you then stop being arbitrary, stop being ad hoc about all of this and say, here is another clear-cut policy and we take into confidence everybody and then go ahead and do this. You should have done that. Instead, what you do is your attorney general gives an opinion, you take a certain view, two days later you go back and try and go halfway house and agree with part of his view and then again you're back to litigation. That's it? right. And then nobody takes responsibility for whatever they say. And then you back out and you say, I didn't mean this. You should have stood up in court and said, I owe responsibility. This was right advice, this was wrong, wrong advice. And we are now willing to correct ourselves because there is a larger public interest involved. But how does it help anybody to go and say, I'm going to slap you with penalty now. I'm going to launch criminal action against you when there is clearly no criminal action that is pending. It is the understanding of the players in the marketplace at that time that this is what the policy allowed people to do. And they did that. And then to say that, no, no, this is going to be retrospective. When commerce runs on the basis of certain business models, you can't go ahead and disrupt that retrospectively. How is he going to sustain it? 
and that is what needs to be understood. So, so, so do you agree, Ramji, that given all that you're saying, the situation, now I'm talking from the industry point, the telecom industry point, given this whole goalpost changing, and now, of course, it will all depend on the orders that are passed by various courts, it's a very difficult phase for the telecom industry? Uh, yes, yes, we are. This is a very critical phase. We can now lag behind. There was a time when we were ahead of the United States. We were ahead of Europe. Europe messed it up with 3G. The technology that was available and you in use in the United States was abysmal. We were on the path of actually being leaders here with the best of it all. But now we've lost it all. There has been a policy, complete lackadaisical manner. There is paralysis. There is paralysis in decision making also and it is not well thought out. People are all afraid. If I were to take this decision, then what happens? Somebody is going to attack me. I would rather not. Then there are political considerations and that also comes into play. But I think this is very critical to answer your question, Vivek. This is critical. I think people need to sit through, think through this and resolve this instead of being opportunistic, yeah. instead of being vicious. Instead of competitive forces going ahead, looking at it only in the short term and not in the long term. Because in the long term, it helps all competitors to actually have a healthy industrial scenario. Rather than saying that I will take advantage of this now and defend my position and go and backbite and destroy the other. So that is not going to happen. The minister has also said it, that he sees no consensus also. But then he has to forge that consensus if the industry finds that there is actually a solid policy making. That is very important. Right. The more recent order that came out of a special court by taking cognizance of a charge sheet, and I'm not getting into the specifics of individuals there, but my larger point to Ramji is, in effect, isn't it an admission or taking cognizance of the fact that for almost 10 years, precious spectrum in a precious band was actually used after having been acquired in a dubious way? I'm talking more at a very larger level. Isn't that really the point that the cognizance of this charge sheet reason that just takes us back that for 10 years you had a situation where dubiously acquired spectrum and precious spectrum of that uh, particular megahertz band was being used. That's right. Uh, but that's why I said people decided to close their eyes. They knew that there was a problem. They had to think through it. And yet they never attempted any solutions uh, knowing fully well that there would be problems. Let me take you back to about 10 years. In 2003, when we had the shift from the policy from 99 to 2003 with the uni Unified Access License, that was again a very critical move. We realized that we can't stop technology. Let's just go ahead and deal with it and allow regulations to be flexible enough. Uh, people who may have abused, find them, but let them go ahead now and let us have a new regime altogether. They did that. At that time, they identified that there will be a Unified Licensing also, which will be six months later. Everybody stopped short. The ministers, the EGOM, the policy maker, the regulator, the stakeholders, everybody knew that we will have a spectrum shortage. They knew that we had to take back spectrum from the defense very quickly. Ten years down the line, Not even though we knew it, we still haven't been able to do that. We still are facing the same spectrum shortage that we put in black and white on paper in 2003. So what do you explain that? It is not the stakeholder, because the stakeholder and the industry player says, well, if these people are taking no action, my subscriber base is increasing, I need to hang on to that spectrum to be able to survive. And in that process, maybe a lie or two, an untruth or two, intended or unintended, but all to save businesses or to sustain businesses or to at least carry on till the spectrum policy unveiled itself in whatever form. I don't think businesses say we will not pay for spectrum. I don't think anybody can say that, no, 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 I want it for a song. Because that is not true. They are all smart enough to realize that also, rational enough to realize that. But the ad, ad hocism. The ad hocism. Or reserve the... price today this much. I will bring it down to so much. I will allow you to uh, bid. I will not allow you to bid. I will say you can do this. You can provide these services 3G. I will not allow you to do uh, you know, something else, uh, interconnection or whatever else, maybe ICR as they call it. I will allow you to use satellites, but I will not allow you to go ahead and use this in a particular manner. All of this is ad hocism. This is license Raj coming back. And what is it that we fought? We said, no, we will not want to do that. By going ahead and appointing and giving power to all of this, you are allowing license Raj to come back. And that's exactly what has happened. 
So those little people sitting there, wielding their power through notes, allowing ad hocism to happen and allow you to use it at this percentage, that cost, is what has led to this. The sooner we realize this, and that's what courts have said, clear the stables now, start on a clean slate. But the courts never said that, no, 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 this has to be retrospective, do this, do that, and I'm going to disrupt. They said, we are pointing out to you that this was actually a problem, this was not the right thing to do. And therefore, start on a clean slate. We still have the opportunity to do it. And I, having seen this industry from the very first petition that was filed uh, before the TV sat, when it was set up, I can, I, I, I'm, I'm very sure that if people got their heads together, this will turn out to be another story. For a, for a, for a starter, they probably should have never allowed TD Sat to reach a point where it's dysfunctional. Isn't that a very grim reality of the manner in which we, we saw a situation where even as of today, a SAT, which was another good tribunal which was created for the securities market, is almost pretty much dysfunctional. It's just one member, and that too, not a judicial member. You would be surprised. Actually, you wouldn't be because you're following this. We have set up regulators so that, we, they're expert regulators, so that we go, we are, we are away from the Babudum and the License Raj. And there are independent people who will then go ahead and take decisions in a rational manner, involving everybody in a consultative process. But having appointed them, you are not renewing their terms. There is no fresh appointment, whether it's SAT, whether it's the Telecom Dispute Settlement Appellate Tribunal, whether there is the Electricity Tribunal, uh, Appellate Tribunal, whether there are people sitting in the commissions, electricity commissions, you, there, there are vacancies. And therefore the government is doing nothing to appoint any such suitable replacement also. As a result, they get into a paralysis situation again. So what happens? You have no remedies. There are quick solutions that were possible and that gets relegated. The high courts are burdened with their own problems and you go to the high court and say but the tribunal is not functioning so therefore please give me the court says I don't have expertise over this I don't know the history but I'll give you some interim protection and we hope that the government will act quickly that this that sorry, sorry state of affairs it is but but you know you have to govern this country these institutions must be manned they must be good people but you must man those institutions so that then your, the life goes on but you can't disrupt it